a little evil could go a long, long way. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. Not good. Mm. That's bad. I also see he's so wicked. Well, and that's somehow worse. <laughs> in a bowling yeah. alley from hell, there's only one way to score. Yeah, that's all right. is episode 160 of I Hope You Suffer. My name is Nathan. Dang. I'm Kit. I'm Katie. This week for our three year anniversary episode, we watched wow. Slimy Polar Babes from 1988. <laughs> <laughs> Slimy uh, Bimbo Babes. <laughs> A very limited amount of bowling in this. Yeah. Very sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they at least bowl with a head, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I wanted more of that, though. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Bullorama, which I assume Katie hated. <laughs> <laughs> Just based on the first ten minutes of this movie, I assume Katie was like, fuck this. <laughs> um... Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, this isn't a movie I'm like super fond of, but like, it's fine. You know, it's like a for me like a totally watchable movie. I'm very baffled by some of the choices in it. Uh, Kit, what what is what do you what's your take on Slimy Bowler Babes? <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. Like I guess it's worth a watch. I don't. I don't have strong feelings either way about it. There are a couple of bits that are funny, like the the bowling with a head and shit. But uh, I don't know. It's mostly mostly worth it for the the quote that Static X used at the end of "I'm was stupid." That's, <laughs> that's which, what this movie is to me now. Which one is it? Uh, when what's his name? Uh. Linnea Quigley's talking to him, and she's like, you remember when you came up, and the first thing you said to me was, hey, do you come here often? And he goes, yeah, that was stupid, huh? And she goes, yeah, it was really <laughs> stupid. Uh, she's like the saving grace of this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Katie, why did you hate this? <laughs> um, Is this like a beloved movie or something? It's It's a movie that I think... So basically, if Linnea Quigley's in a movie, people are going to fucking like people it. People love and it. Love it. And like, yeah. I, I like Linnea Quigley, but she's also in a lot of really shitty movies because she's just does. She's in 201 films. So, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Right. Your, your ratio there is probably not great. But she's in like some, 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 you know undeniable classics and she's just in some some bullshit and i think this one kind of lands in the middle i think it's it's a movie that people enjoy i wouldn't say it's necessarily beloved but i think it's like you know people like it it's probably it's got a great title yeah it probably it, it's something like i feel like it falls kind of in that like middle ground like it's got a 2.6 out of 5 on letterboxd that's right right it's like that's the um, correct score. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's... Because it's, it's one of those movies where it's just goofy enough in that 80s catalog to, like... Like, it's something that I, I, I would bet a lot of people around my age probably saw the VHS at, the, like, the movie store and saw the title and were like, oh, hell yeah, I'm watching this. Uh, I think it would be a good one, like, you know, if you're doing, like, a trash like or a secret movie uh screening like at a theater with a crowd of people who are like pretty game if that came up i think it would be pretty fun but, yeah sure you know watching watching solo is just kind of yeah whatever 
Yeah, I guess um, I the title is familiar to me, even though I couldn't remember it. Sorry, there's a bunch of dog stuff happening outside. Um, <laughs> dog stuff. I don't, dog activity yeah. happening. <laughs> Let's just talk about dog stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, on it, obvious, yeah. Um, I guess I don't understand that, like, obviously the title was just supposed to be wacky, but for me, I felt like the movie wasn't wacky enough for what the title had going on. Um, because, like, I don't know, yeah, what does is, what is Slime Ball have to do with it? Bolarama, like, I get they were in a bowling alley, but, like, yeah, there was an, I, I don't know why... I expected it to be like I don't know alien related, and then also have them having to like bowl to save themselves or something. And for the most part, it was just like people running around, and I thought it was kind of boring. Well, and they're like, I I think it was like, I'm because <laughs> I'm just thinking about the fucking incredible like, uh, uh fuck the word just left my brain like the opening title credits of just oh like oh my god it, it looks like a powerpoint <laughs> like someone just did a shitty powerpoint it's incredible and i think because the so like the alternate name of this movie is just the imp also a terrible uh-huh, name okay. all, i don't know beast you is a pretty good name i would watch a movie called beast you um, yeah, I and mean, so at least that makes sense with I, what's happening. In I it. would bet, knowing Full Moon, it was probably made under the name The Imp, and then Full Moon got it and was just like, oh, we'll just add these, like, opening credits and just give it this, like, insane, Absurd name. eye-catching name. Right. Because Troma was, I mean, I Troma like was is good for that, too. Like, Troma would release like these movies that I would see like the DVD for it would have this insane name and then you would watch it and it'd be like the mall as like the opening credits and you're just like what the fuck <laughs> yeah I guess like overall um I <laughs> I just like I mean I get it's a full moon movie I guess but like I didn't think the acting was good and most of the kills were kind of like off screen so it didn't really balance out the shit in it that I didn't care for uh I so yeah I I just I I liked the music a lot but that's about it yeah the music music's pretty good and like I don't know like I like Linnea Quigley in this like I like her and um whoever the actor is that plays Calvin, like, I like their little, like, relationship throughout. Yeah. But, er- like, eh, yeah, everyone else in it is just kind of a trash person, so, like, it's just whatever happens to him. I guess except for... I forget which one of the women that's, like, trying out, or is trying to get initiated to sorority that just kind of gets screwed over by the one dude's wish that's just, like... <laughs> I want to bang her, and then it's just like, oh, so she doesn't get a wish, she just gets possessed into wanting to bang this nerd? Yeah. Seems like a a shitty deal. Um, Life isn't fair, Nathan. Yeah, fair. I'll I'll accept that. Life's uh, pretty not great a lot of the time. (laughs) What is life but a terrible imp? Yeah, with a... (laughs) pretty Uncle racist uh, pimp voice <laughs> <laughs> by a guy named Dookie Flyswatter. I can't be oh. uh, I have him as Michael Sonny. So, I don't know. May- I don't know. The only the correct... I don't know if it's the voice or maybe they named the puppet. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> Uncle That's a MP great name for a puppet. I agree. Because, <laughs> like, Letterboxd will periodically have, like, you know, the dog in a movie, like, under, like, the credits. And, yeah. like, stuff like that, so I don't know. That's just all it has for, like, Uncle Impy as the, uh... As a credit for Unletterboxd. Um, I saw... So I saw this movie for the first time. 
when uh, the last drive-in did it during that like 24-hour marathon one they did, right. like that first mm-hmm. one. And I think having it, the breaks in it of Joe Bob kind of like explaining shit made, God, it, it, made it a little better. Um, which is rough to say for a movie that's only like an hour and 19 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. like, I don't know. Overall, like, I I don't necessarily think this is a, a bad movie. It's just pretty middle of the road with just some, like, cool 80s, uh, like, kills in it or whatever. You could tell they're probably... I don't... I wonder, what did, when did Revenge of the Nerds come out? Was that before this? Had to have been, oh, I right? have no idea. I don't know what year either of these came out. This was eighty eight. Uh, oh my god! I'm oh, terrible. I'm sure. Yeah, eighty like four, early eighties, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, you can tell there's like a, a bit of that going on, especially yeah. at like the beginning. Because <laughs> I would say like the first at least twenty minutes of this movie is a basically stalking and. Uh, sexual assault. Yeah. So, not great. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I could tell when this movie started. Well, I don't know. I was, like, going to give it a little bit because I was like, maybe once they get to the Bolarama, something cool would happen. Um, yeah, but bowling. <laughs> there wasn't even bowling. I was excited for... A, I thought this was sports, okay? It would be <laughs> awesome if there was just, like, um, a... 25 minute seat of just them having like a very intense like Tournament. bowling game <laughs> yeah I don't know why I don't know why I thought this was going to be some kind of like alien thing um but it did not turn out to be anything that I was expecting um <laughs> you would expect Uncle Impy to pop out of a bowling trophy no <laughs> No, I wasn't. You're so disappointed. <laughs> like, I, I like, I don't know. I, I think maybe because like this isn't the first time that I have watched a movie that I had heard of from this like era or whatever that people talk about that I hadn't seen, and then I didn't know what it was about, and it ended up being like amazing. So like in my mind, I'm like oh, yeah, maybe it'll be something crazy like society. And I think maybe I had, like, a higher bar set in my mind so that, like, once I saw what was actually happening in this movie, I was kind of like, oh. Well, okay. Society. Like, it just wasn't. Society babes. Society babes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And the slime ball bolorama. That's the one. That would have been. that. Yeah, that is the one. Not sorority. I need the society. So, um... (laughs) Well, good news. I don't know. The the good news for you is there's a sequel coming. Allegedly, I saw that down below. I didn't know. I assumed it was already out. Um, was, looks terrible. Wasn't it supposed to have been out like early 2020 or something? It just says like Letterbox like just got, says 2020, but I don't know. Yeah, they they got like funding but haven't done anything with it. It's um, I feel like the cover this up looks before. like. Uh, there These was some... people went to like Spencer's and bought like sorority girl <laughs> costumes for these ladies. Like, what the fuck? Uh, on the sequel cover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're literally just like, like one it, of them's literally, literally just an underwear. Looks... So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's got a purse though. She... Oh, I'm sorry. That's a bowling bag. She's got a bowling bag. <laughs> uh, well, no. So, so what's um... funny is, and I guarantee you. All three of these women on the cover are not in the movie, because probably not. The cast like, so far is he is a uh, Linnea Quigley is back, um, oh, Taffy is back, and then Lisa is that. back. Even though, yeah, pretty sure they all died except for Linnea Quigley. Okay, but Taffy is the listed as the director. Yeah, her and David uh, DeCateo. Guess it's Attenborough. Yeah, David Attenborough. That would be fucking <laughs> incredible. <laughs> um, okay, are bo- are like co-directing it. Um. Yeah, the cover looks like they just took the pictures off of like a Spirit Halloween 
sexy nerd costume and just like <laughs> superimposed it over the bowling alley with <clears throat> Mr. Impy. Uncle Impy. It's the same, like, again, Troma does the exact same shit where you'll buy a DVD that just has, like, some half-naked woman on the cover that is, like, has nothing to do with the movie. And it works. People buy them. Great okay. strategy. Well, <laughs> I did take real notes on the movie, and it is only three pages long, so we can go through it. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay. <laughs> so, this movie... I, like I said, I, I wrote, I like the music. It was just, like, fun, shitty 80s music, the, uh, inco- yeah, like, one, including, like... One of, the, one of the things Full Moon does pretty well, I think, consistently is their scores. Because it's, um... Yeah. Oh, fuck, what's... It? It's Charles Band's brother that does the scores for a lot of them, but I can't think... Ben. Of... Ben Band. Richard Band. And Dick Richard Band. Richard Band is kind of like a pretty, <laughs> a pretty uh, yeah. You fucking you just derailed whatever I was gonna say with Dick Band. <laughs> oh God! I hope people call him that so much. <laughs> Mister Richard, <laughs> hanging out with old okay. Dick Bands tonight. <laughs> I got a new Twitter handle. <laughs> Changed my name to Dick Band. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think Richard uh. Band is like pretty, pretty. Like, it's kind of <laughs> not on the same level as a John Carpenter, but kind of like, you know, a pretty well regarded he, composer. He's done like real movie scores, right? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Not, not just Full Moon stuff. <laughs> yeah, he did Terror Vision. <laughs> Yeah, that's a real movie. That's what else the realest do you want? movie. Yeah, like, yeah, like Reanimator is a fucking really good yeah. score. From Beyond. Yeah, so yeah. it was uh, good, uh, including a song that was called "Sex," where the chorus is just someone saying "sex." Oh over my god, that song fucking rules! <laughs> bathing. I was like, "What is going on here?" He so, did. He did. I mean, the, just a pop. He did the score to Zarkor the Invader. Oh, I'm in. I figured you would be. <laughs> that that sounds like some horse shit I make up. Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hype. Ah! That's in on that. <laughs> um, probably all he of did, the Trancers movies. He did the score for a uh, classic video game, Clay Fighter 63 and a third. Oh, shit. Wow. Clay Fighter was so good. I love that, Clay Fighter. That fucking rules. What a All king. Right, respect. I stand. Respect to Dick Band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's okay. talk about this movie. <laughs> All right. So this basically just starts out with just like a bunch of dude bros hanging out. Well, they're not, they're not yeah, dude bros, dudes. but they're not cool. They're just bros. Yeah, they're just you know? a bunch of fucking nerds. Uh, Guys being yeah. dorks. So they're, they're hanging out. There's one guy who I was call- – like nobody really says – I didn't know who who people's names were for a really long time, but these three guys are named Jimmy, Calvin, and Keith. And the only one that's really that important is Calvin because he is like I kept calling him horror bro. So like in the beginning, he's watching some kind of dumb looking horror movie, but the other guys are like looking at penthouse and like talking about just being they're just being gross guys, right? And one of them is dudes like talking dudes, about like how said. yeah. Exactly. I mean, like, literally. Uh, and they're talking about how Keith says he uh, knows about the sorority that does, like, really weird sorority initiations. They're having one tonight, and if Jimmy gives him a beer, he's going to show him how he watches it or something. Uh, then we get a scene of, like, uh, their names are Babs. Babs is kind of like the head sorority bitch. And then we have Frankie and Rhonda. So these three girls are the ones who are like ahead of the sorority and they're getting ready, you know, just doing girl stuff, like complaining about their hair and stuff or whatever. And um, they are wearing robes and talking about like the traditions of like initiating people into sororities. Uh, I will never understand sororities for the record. That um, sounds terrible. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so the dudes, 
the the two dudes basically are talking about how they're going to go peek at the initiation. They're trying to talk Calvin into it. He's like sort of not into it. He just wants to watch his movie or whatever. And they talk him into drinking a single beer, which wrecks him for the rest of the movie somehow. Um, <laughs> That's me. That's me. He's like literally, he's like puking the entire movie. Um, <laughs> so they talk him into drinking the beer and then they're going to go watch the initiation, right? So they go to the, the, the sorority house and um, the girls have just like left the blinds up through the window on the windows even though this is supposed to be like a secret initiation or whatever, but it's fine. So they're watching through the window. There's these two other girls named Kathy and Lisa, and they are the pledges. So they're the ones that are trying to get into the sorority. Right. And they're basically just like, I don't know, just trying to do this because I guess back in the day, like you needed to be a part of a sorority to like get anywhere in life. Right. So they are going to do the hazing, so to speak. And the hazing in this situation is that the girls have to bend over a couch while Bab smacks them in the butt with a paddle. So we're, we're going, we're, we're doing great. We get a solid like, the eight scene minutes lasts of that. <laughs> so long. It lasts for so long. Um, the dudes are outside watching. <clears throat> what? I was going to say, you gotta, you gotta get as much of that in there as possible. I mean, I guess so. It, it, yeah. So, um, the dudes decide that they want to get a closer look. So they're going to sneak inside, which just seems, I mean, it's illegal. So <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, like, seems not good, but disgusting. pretty illegal, <laughs> but also illegal. And so they sneak inside and they're watching the spanking, right? And then the other, and then, so they stop the paddling, right? And then they're just like, time for your next initiation, uh, which is spraying the girls with whipped cream for whatever reason. While they have clothes on, so like. Like barely, though. They have like barely, but feels like. like, It feels like any other movie, they would have at least been topless. Well, we're. I'm not, I'm not like complaining. I'm just, you know, like. It just feels like no, so no. like it's well, it, it feels it's pointless too because they yeah they do it and then they're like well the point is because okay so then they do it and then they're just like ha 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 wow we're so crazy you go you girls go shower and then we'll let you know what the last initiation is so the girls go up and shower they're like fully it's like there's like full frontal nudity which i was not expecting i was like oh okay so they're showering for like a long time and kind of talking about how like so what i i don't remember which what one of them is like not really super into it and she's kind of like well i don't really want to do this anymore and the other one's like trying to talk her into it she's like let's just like stick around and see what the last thing that we have to do is and then like whatever so the guy's creep upstairs and look in the bathroom and watch them showering which is like fucking gross and Bab catches them and she basically is just like well I don't know like I don't know what to do with you guys like maybe we'll just murder you no one will know ha 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 um that would be like, awesome I don't know it's only you... like 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> if they just like kill them at the end that's your initiation um you get the idea that Bob's is like actually kind of something she's like sadistic a little bit because she's like the way that they have her act. She's kind of like, she doesn't really actually do anything, but she like acts like she's like, I don't know, like a games mistress or something. You know what I mean? Like, um, anyways, didn't think I would say those words. Um, (laughs) so she basically decides that, the two pledges, Lisa and Taffy, along with all of the dudes that broke in, have to break into the mall where the bowling alley is and bring her back a trophy as a souvenir. And then they'll be able to get into the sorority. And the boys are kind of just like, hey, that's messed up. Like, just because we broke in here doesn't mean we need to break in somewhere else. But then the other guys are like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be alone with these babes. So we'll go. Um, So that whole group leaves to break into the mall. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Babs' dad owns the mall. 
so like they can just go in um they're gonna go to the security office and like spy on them and then also i guess scare them i don't know so they go do that they break in it's not a very There's, like, good plan whole... no so they so like babs and them get there first and like unlock the door, get in, and there's like this whole bit with the janitor, and I did not understand anything that was happening with the janitor. <laughs> the janitor uh, except that like, <laughs> uh, they like accidentally lock him in a boiler room or something, or something, and he's like, "It's darker than a dog's asshole in here," or something. Like he just <laughs> says a bunch of stuff like that. The like what? Um, what flower? The best. We'll get to it, but the scene when, like, he can't hear Linnea quickly, <laughs> and he keeps just, like, repeating the shit she just said is so funny. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's funny. Yeah, so they lock him in there by accident. Um, so then the whole other group gets there, and they're, like, talking about how they're going to pick the lock or whatever, but then one of them just tries the door and it opens, and they just walk right in. This part made me laugh because uh, <laughs> it sounded like something I would say. One of them is just like, man, this place gives me the whim wham. And they were like, the what? What are you talking about? He's like, you know, the heebie-jeebies, the creeps. And I was like, I'm going to have to use a whim wham. <laughs> yeah, whim whams is a good word. Um, so they all split up. Uh, trying, to, They're in the bowling alley. Try to split up to look for like a trophy or whatever. And this is when Calvin uh, runs into a woman who is Linnea Quigley, uh, who's just, like, in the process of robbing the bowling alley. And um, he basically, for some reason, just, like, explains to her why they're there, even though she's just, like, eat shit. She's just, like, really mean to all of them, which was cool. No way. It's the she really, uh, her, She's so good at this. I said cool. Oh, they said not cool. I was like, no. No, I said, which is they cool. They deserve she, it. Uh, her name is Spider, so, yeah. Perfect, perfect um, name. Yes. And so she, there's, like, a bunch of dialogue that happens with this. Um, the group finds the trophies, but they're, like, behind a, a locked gate, and she basically picks the lock for them and calls them assholes, which is, <laughs> I liked her being mean to them. Yeah. And... So they, they do go in and pick out a trophy um, and essentially like Calvin keeps trying to talk to her like he's like I don't know just trying to like bond with her and he's like where are your parents like what are you why are you breaking in here <laughs> or whatever parents. yeah what, I well, what happened them. to them <laughs> yeah. um, Jimmy I don't know what he says to Calvin but he says something rude to him and she's basically just like why don't you leave him alone why don't you leave me alone like I'll fucking kill you I don't think that's what she says but essentially that's what she says and she like hits him so Jimmy drops the trophy and it rolls on the ground and it starts like steaming and shit and then a little gargoyle man pops out of it um, he's an imp <laughs> He is an imp. He looks like a little gargoyle. And he calls himself Old Uncle Impy. And he basically tells them that he's going to grant them wishes. And Calvin is kind of like, I don't know. Like, everyone's like, dope. They're like, fuck yeah, wishes. But then Calvin's like, I don't know. Like, be careful because, like, sometimes when you make wishes, wishes go bad and stuff. Like, I've seen that happen before. And they're kind of just like, shut up. And they, like, make fun of him. Uh, so Jimmy is the first one. Uh, I don't know. Uncle Impy says a bunch of stuff. He does a lot of, a bunch of one-liners and whatnot. Uh, but essentially he's like, Jimmy can make a wish first. So Jimmy wishes for gold and then he, he grants the wish and there's like a huge pile of gold bars. And Jimmy's like, yeah, awesome. So meanwhile, Babs and the other girls are like watching it and they're like, what the fuck? We need to get down there and make some wishes or whatever. And Babs is like, I don't know. Like, let's wait and see. So then Uncle Impy says to Keith, uh, like, hey, don't you want to have sex with that girl? And Keith's like, heck yeah, I do. And so Uncle Impy like transforms her. She's just like wearing lingerie now and she's like all about Keith, right? Uh, and so they go off together. Calvin is just like, uh, I don't know. This is pretty lame. Like, we should leave. 
And Uncle Impy is like, I don't think so. And he like makes all the doors in the whole mall like shut and lock or whatever. So and, uh, Uncle Impy is like sweet talking Taffy and is basically like saying, hey, like, I really like you. Like, you're a sweet girl. Like, you can have two wishes. Uh, and so the first thing that she wishes is that she always wanted to be prom queen when she was in school. And so, like, he transforms her into just, like, she's wearing, like, a ball gown. And I'm like, wearing a ball gown in a bowling alley is not really the same as being a prom queen in school, but sure. Dis- disagree. <laughs> disagree. <laughs> She disagrees. She's like spinning around and she's like, yeah, (laughs) Um, she's into it. Uh, Spider is essentially just like eat shit. I'm leaving. So her and Calvin are, you know, go to leave or whatever. Um, Impy then kind of turns his attention to Babs and the other girls because he can like sense that they're watching, I guess. And he uses some kind of power to turn them into what I thought were zombies at first, but it's, it turns out that he just, like, he turned Frankie into, like, the Bride of Frankenstein, I guess. Or Bride of Dracula. Somebody called her, and she was, like, hissing, but she looked like Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know. Then the other one's just, like, a zombie. She's got, like, a zombie face. And, um... I hate to have Babs, a case of zombie face. I know. <laughs> I mean... Uh... So, I don't know. Babs like runs when she sees the magic happening I guess uh, and she goes running into the mall and she like almost escapes but then when she gets to the doors she gets electrified and she passes out <laughs> seems not great so they're trapped no it's not great um, Spider and Calvin are like uh oh that's not good uh, things are gonna start going the wishes are going to turn bad or whatever. So then Jimmy, Jimmy realizes that the gold is not gold bars. It is wood that is painted gold. (laughs) And Lisa's dress is all fucked up now. Um, No no discernible reason. Yeah, it just happens. No, it's just like, it's not, it's like, it's not even like she just realizes she's not actually prom queen. It's just like her dress is fucked up. And she's like, what happened to my dress? And I was like, what did happen to it? Like, what? It's not like <laughs> she least, was already wearing that dress. I don't know. At least there's an excuse for the gold. And they're like, oh, hey, this is just wood painted gold. She's just like, I'm an idiot and didn't realize my dress sucks, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, like, it also keeps cutting back and forth between, like, Keith and Lisa. Like, Lisa's trying real hard to, like, get it on. And Keith is like, well, oh, well I don't know. Maybe hold on a second. This is. At least he realizes it's wrong, I guess, which is good. I, I don't know. But she's, like, tr- just, like, I don't know, rubbing on him and stuff. And he's, like, I don't know. So nothing really happens with that. She doesn't, like, turn violent. Like, it's just, like, I don't know. Anyways. Um, then Frankie and Rhonda as zombies or whatever start attacking like Jimmy and Lisa. So um, Jimmy gets caught and they put his face in, I don't know, an ice machine. I thought it they was put a his bowling face ball in some cleaner. kind of machine. Oh, okay. Maybe I couldn't tell what it was. Um, but anyways, his face gets a little bit bloody, I guess, <laughs> but he's dead uh, because then Rhonda bowls with his head, which was pretty cool. Yes, it to rules. be fair, um, the only way people and Impy's like, Impy's like Uncle Impy is like narrating it, and he's just like, "Oh no, you got gutterhead," and I was like, "Ha ha!" <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't imagine heads are very aerodynamic to bowl with, so you know she did the best she could. Uh, if you, um, I bet you could get it to bounce just right, to where you get a strike every time. You might. They're pretty lumpy. And um, pop up like that. Yeah. Especially if you have like a lumpy head, you know, like some heads are, are lumpier than others. I don't know. <laughs> um. Just walking Calvin up and to Spider... a person and be like, "You've got a good head for bowling." <laughs> what? <laughs> Not so lumpy like at all. Some kind of. 
Yeah. That sounds like some kind of like uh, serial killer quote that they would put on like a shirt or something, uh, like a Ted uh, Bundy, you know. I mean, clearly he's collecting heads for Boland. Yeah. Uh, I do like those bowling balls that have like skulls in them. They're so like edgy. I love it. Mystery man. Uh, okay, so yeah. <laughs> Calvin, <laughs> Calvin and Spider go to hide, you know, from zombies. Or uh, I'm sorry, they're not zombies; they're demons. Uh, go to hide because this is when Calvin has like started to barf from his one beer that he had an hour ago, and um. Frankie is chasing Taffy around, basically. Taffy, they, like, struggle. Taffy ends up, like, beating her over the head with something that I don't know what it was, but she's, like, still not dead. And Taffy's like, oh, no, that's not great. Um, Meanwhile, Lisa is still trying to have sex with Keith, and Keith is kind of like, well, I don't know. Let me go get some ice. So he he leaves to go get some ice. Um, Meanwhile, Rhonda breaks in. To the room where Spider and Calvin have like or have been hiding, and Spider's just like, "Oh, find me a weapon or something." And then Calvin just like pulls a gun out of a drawer. Like I don't know why they have a gun at a bowling alley, um, but shoot bowling Spider pins. shoot. <laughs> but but uh, Spider shoots her <laughs> a couple times. Oh my god! You know what is the bowling alley in Texas? Because that checks out. Makes sense. So, I can just bring a gun to the bowling alley now. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. I mean, if someone can use a head, you can use a gun, you know. It's fine. <laughs> um, bowling with the gun, just firing at the pins. <laughs> mow them down. Uh-oh. Strike, mark it. <laughs> yeah. You can use, like, one whole, um, what's it called? One round is, like... A single bowl. <laughs> Launch a grenade over there. <laughs> Why not? Blow up like eight lanes. <laughs> eight strikes, bro. <laughs> that, that's a strike, win. yeah. You win automatically. Um, yeah, so... What was her name? Rhonda. Rhonda breaks into the room. Uh, Spider shoots her a few times, uh, but she's, you know, like, a, uh, like a demon so she's fine uh, and they end up just like running away because the gun is out of bullets um <clears throat> the janitor finally gets free from the closet um so back to Keith looking for ice to stall from well, like having sex with Lisa I guess he's like in there looking around and he's in the kitchen he stops to sample a french fry and then Rhonda shows up and just puts his face in the fryer, which uh, I feel like would hurt a lot. Yeah, probably, probably not super fun. Um, Maybe, like, kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> just got to be in there for just a couple um, seconds just to get the fun. So golden brown. Yeah. Um... I'd eat all the fries. It's like bobbing for apples. <laughs> Frying for fries. Um, ooh. So, he's dead, I guess. See ya. Uh, Rhonda and Frankie are chasing Taffy around. They finally find her. They finally grab her, and they just, like, literally rip her body apart in half, which we don't actually see her get ripped in half. Um... Spider and Calvin just, like, find her body in two pieces on the other side of a pole. So, Yeah, the, you know, the sound effects when they're thrilling. doing it uh, seem terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, like, cloth ripping. It's her It's her janky dress <laughs> getting ripped in half. Um, so, meanwhile, like, Babs has just been running around, I guess. Uncle Indy finds her and essentially is just, like, uh... I don't know, I'm evil. That's what I do. Like, it's my job to kill people, and I don't really have a choice. So then, um, Rhonda shows up and starts fighting Babs. Babs pushes her over so that she falls, like, 
headfirst into the bowling alley and Spider and Calvin are like out in the bowling alley and see her. I couldn't think of <laughs> the term, so I wrote Spider does bowling at Rhonda. <laughs> uh, she... What a sentence. Uh, with a bowling ball, not a head. Uh, and I assume smashes Rhonda's head, but we don't really see it. We just see the ball, like, laying next to Rhonda. But they do check to see if she's dead, and she appears to be. So Babs is like, ha, 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 she's dead. You suck. And Impy's just like, well, I don't really care because I'm going to turn you into a demon. And so she, she, Babs turns into a demon. Um, Spider and Calvin run into the janitor he's just like sleeping in this in like the surveillance room and hasn't noticed that like anything is happening in the bowling alley and they're essentially just like hey we're like he's like you guys aren't like what are you doing here you're not supposed to be here and they're just like well we're trapped in here because there's like demons murdering our friends and stuff and the janitor is just like hey uh you kids know the drugs are bad right and then uh, Calvin just like explains everything that happened with the trophy and the janitor's immediately just like oh oh wait I know about that and he's been here for 30 years <laughs> and basically just tells the story about how there's a guy who sucked at bowling really bad then one day he showed up and was great and got a strike every single time and then everyone that was mean to him started dying and so he was arrested because the cops thought he was murdering people. But actually it was the imp because of dark magic. And um, he's essentially just like, you need to trap the imp again and like use, I heard tell something about using magic against him, but I don't know what that means or something. I mean, if you're going to use black magic or dark magic or whatever they call it for anything, it seems like bowling is the logical choice. Yeah. I mean, why not? Um, Going to the skull balls. Yeah. They're I, mean, I feel like anytime, <laughs> I feel like anytime there's ever like black, ma like if somebody uses black magic in a movie, it's always something really weird. Like, I want to be the best violin player. I want to be the best bowler. It's like, is it really worth it that much to like? We bought a zoo. Do that's what that movie yeah, was about. Right? Black magic. I want to have a zoo. Yeah, exactly. It just doesn't seem worth it to me. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, yeah, this is the scene that you were talking about earlier where Linnea is like, or Spider, is like trying to talk to the janitor, but like he keeps mishearing her <laughs> and like repeating like what she says back to her. And uh, anyways, so essentially they're going to go try and trap Uncle Impy again and the janitor's going to wait there for them. So Calvin and Spider, like, leave and Frankie, like, randomly attacks Calvin and, like, takes his knife and then Spider and Calvin go to, like, find a first aid kit to, like, patch up his armor or whatever. Uh, Demon Babs finds, like still possessed Lisa, I guess, but kills her. This is also off screen. We don't see it. Um, Spider and Calvin decide that they're going to try to... This is, like, really weird because he, like, passes out or something for some reason, and she's just like, while you were sleeping, I came up with this plan. So Spider decides that they're going to set all the demon babes on fire. Sure. Yeah. So then Bab shows up and attacks them, and... Calvin hits her with, he's like, hey, Babs, want a cocktail? And, like, throws a Molotov cocktail at her, and she, she like, blows up. This, I mean, she doesn't blow up. She gets set on fire. This fire stunt is insane. Because, like, that person yeah. was, like, very on fire. <laughs> yeah, like, completely engulfed. Um, so... Meanwhile, Frankie, who is still a demon and has a knife, knocks on the surveillance door and the janitor thinks that it's Spider and Calvin and opens the door and uh, she kills him, I guess, 
at this point, we also don't see it happen. But then later, Spider and Calvin walk in the room to check on him, and he's, like, dead. And this is when she chases them, and they fight. Um, Spider and Frankie are, like, fighting. She's got an axe or whatever. This part I actually thought was pretty funny. Spider, like, grabs the axe and literally just, like, lobs off Frankie's head. And it, like, flies through the air and hits some doors. And because she's, like, a demon, it, like, negates the MP's, like, magic that's holding the door shut. And the doors just, like, fly open. <laughs> um, What a way to escape. Calvin runs out. I know, right? And it was, like, the, the reason that I liked it is because it was kind of, like, by accident. And then Calvin was just like, oh, yeah, using magic against magic. I was like, yeah, I mean, who would have known? Just throw a head. I guess the answer to any problem is just, like, a head. Throw a head right? at it. Like, bowling, doors locked, you know, like, it works. So, Spider tells Calvin to go get the car. I, I don't... So he, he runs out there and starts the car, but Rhonda is in it, and she's, like, trying to choke him and shit as he's driving. Meanwhile, Uncle Impy is watching Rhonda trying to choke out Calvin and, like, really enjoying the show, and Spider just like sneaks up behind him with what I assume is some kind of tobacco canister and traps him again. It's um, literally, it's like Calvin, the, the can sense says Prince Alberto on it. Uh, <laughs> well, so Calvin is like the magic stops, I guess, but Calvin and like slams into a bunch of other cars and like flips the car and shit. And, um, Spider runs over there to check on him. He's okay. And basically, they're like, I don't know, what do we do? And they're like, well, there's like a bunch of dead people in there. So like the cops are going to be here. And unless like you want to answer for it, we got to go. And he's just like, well, what are we going to do? And she's like, let's go back to my place. And then they ride off on her motorcycle and fall in love, I assume, which I love for them. Yeah, I assume they get And hungry. then it pans. I probably had little half spider, half nerd babies. Cute. <laughs> and um, it pans over to a shot of Impy inside the can being like, please let me out. It smells like tobacco in here. What's up with that? I don't want to be in this cage. Or I don't want to be trapped anymore or whatever. And then it's just the end. Spoiler, he is gidded out in the sequel. I assume. <laughs> I assume so. He is on the cover. So... Yeah. What, that if was it. what if it's just his corpse? What if they weaken it, Bernie? Him? I hope it's like Son of Mask and it's his son. <laughs> what if they weakened at Bernie him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it kind of seems like a bad idea to like have trapped him and then just like leave the canister like there. Yeah. Not great. Like at least throw it into the bottom of the ocean or some shit. Yeah. Something. But I rock to yeah, it. I, mean, I, it to mean, a I assume as long as they're not there, they, they're fine. It's just gonna yeah, I mean, just gonna probably kill some policemen. So who cares? That's true. Yeah, fair. That's, Best that's case scenario. Cool. I hope we get the cops <laughs> finding him. Like you know, <laughs> they just open it. Like at just... the end of Jumanji, when someone else finds the Jumanji board, like washed up on the beach, you know, something like that. Uh, yeah, I hope that's all the sequel is. That'd be pretty cool. I'm in. <laughs> um, alright, news. Uh, I mean, I didn't really uh -huh. see anything. Alright, good. To be honest with you. No news. I, like, wrote some stuff down, and then I, like, scribbled it all out, because it's all pretty nothing. It's, like, pointless. Um, uh, alright. What, uh, what did everybody watch this week? Not a lot. Yeah, me either. <laughs> but yeah, I watched a showdown in Little Tokyo, which is so stupid it fucking rules. Yeah, the Dolph Lundgren movie. Yeah, yeah. Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee. Yeah, that movie's good. A plus. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, what about you, Katie? Well, I watched a lot of really bad Amityville movies. Yeah, not great. And... Then I had to watch a bunch of really bad uh, 
action movies. Yeah, that sounds fun. Um, so, no, no, no such thing. So I watched... Um, I did also watch Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, which was pretty funny. I saw part of that. Uh, movie I had filmed. never seen that before. Really? Wow. Yeah, they were. Uh, were you part of the reunion? It. Yeah, I'm. I'm in there. <laughs> There's a scene they shot like on Venice Beach somewhere when I was like a kid. I remember we like walked by as they were filming it and like watched it. That's like the only thing I ever <laughs> remember when that movie comes and... up. <laughs> and look for your sweater vest in the background that I assume was the only thing you wore as a child. It's the only thing I wear now. I mean, the same sweater vest. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a, it's like a tube top now. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so I also had to watch this movie called In the Line of Fire, which uh, <laughs> was a ridiculous movie um, that starred Clint Eastwood, John Malkovich, Renee Rousseau, and Dylan McDermott. Gary Cole was also in it. But, like, essentially, um, Harrison, wait, I keep wanting to call him Harrison Ford. I know his name is not Harrison Ford. Clint Eastwood plays, like, a Secret Service agent who was, like, supposed to be guarding, like, JFK when he got assassinated or something. And so, now he's retired, but John Malkovich is this guy who's like obsessed with killing the president and like also obsessed with Clint Eastwood and um it's a really ridiculous movie but John Malkovich does like shitty 90s uh like disguises and it's very funny um and I but I I don't remember like why he said this but there was a line in it where Clint Eastwood literally says I know things about pigeons, Lily. And I was like, what does that mean? So that wasn't great. And then I also had to watch Some of All Fears <laughs> with uh, Ben Affleck and yeah. Morgan Freeman. And that wasn't great. And then I also had to watch something called The November Man that had Pierce Brosnan in it. And um, it made no sense. Yeah, but Pierce Brosnan and it was, was really like, bad. Assuming <laughs> rules. Yeah. Uh, he's a man. It's November. I mean, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so just trying to yeah. enjoy some colored so, leaves. Yeah, it's a me, nice autumnal walk. I love an autumnal walk as much as the next person. <laughs> but this movie was not that. It was basically I don't know, man. It was bad. I'm starting to think like. I enjoy Goldeneye, but I'm starting to think that Pierce Brosnan's best movie is uh, Goldeneye. Mrs. Doubtfire. Lawnmower Man. <laughs> yeah, definitely Lawnmower Man. Well, and um, then today I watched. Well, yeah. Then then I had to watch Sorority Slime Ball, and then I watched Jacob's Wife finally, and um, I actually really liked it. I thought the plot was kind of overstated, but as a movie, I I really liked it. So, um, I don't know if you want. There's been a lot of vampire stuff going on recently. Oh, CM Punk's in that? Yeah, briefly as like a cop. Yeah, but. I've been meaning to watch it. I just. Oh my god, I knew I recognized him. (laughs) Yep, that's Pepsi Man. So. Yeah. So, um, um, wasn't he in? Okay, so yeah, he was the one that was in that girl yeah. on the third floor that I watched. Yep. Where I was like, that guy had all those tattoos, and then you guys said that, and I was like, holy shit. Okay, I knew I recognized him. Yeah, he's not really in the movie that that much, but um, yeah, overall, I really liked it. I thought I thought it was good. The real question um, is, so I would recommend that. Does he give somebody yeah. a go to sleep? Does he give Barbara Crampton a go to sleep? <laughs> It's the, the head he really vampire it? with it. <laughs> that that would have been so funny. To be honest, he doesn't really do anything. Yeah, uh, just like except a like except to be in it uh, a little bit. But I I enjoyed it, and I think it's uh I think it's worth a watch. Uh yeah. Besides a bunch of Amityville movies, I watched Pineapple Express with Caitlin. Which, yes. Oh, oh yeah. my god, I watched that too. It's fine. I've seen it, like, a thousand times, though. I love that movie. I think it's, like, only the second time I've watched it, and... I like Seth Rogen, but I do not like, uh... James Franco. 
But the, you know, the fucking Danny Mc... I like him I like him less and less as the years go the, on, to be the honest. The Danny with you. McBride stuff, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just getting shot like eight times. Um Love it. It's got nothing on a Pineapple Express two. There's a from s- this is the end. Oh, I haven't seen that. I was like, that, wait, this, yeah. They're they're all locked up in the house because the apocalypse is going on outside right. and they're bored. So they just like film their own sequel, <laughs> and uh, Jonah Hill plays Woody Harrelson in it, and he's trying to <laughs> uh, take all of the weed and monopolize it. So only he's getting the money for it or whatever. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> um. I watched Vice Academy Part 2 and 3 just to finish the trilogy of them on uh, Arrow, which is just more Linnea Quigley movies. Um, Apparently there's like three other ones that are on Tubi that are somehow not attached to them, but I don't know. Uh, Then I started the Extreme Japanese Movies playlist thing on Arrow. Oh, man. So I got I watched Audition again, which is still perfect. And then I started watching the Ringu movies and got three in and quit. Because <laughs> I realized how convoluted and terrible the timeline of them are. But the first movie is really good. I I think I'd seen it, but I also I just feel like I also just could have cultural osmosis and like think I saw it, because I'm not 100% sure. Um, The Ringu 2 is pretty good. Um, It's just pretty interesting that it's, like, the second sequel to it, because they made Spiral, which everyone hated, so they were like, uh, can you come back and make an actual sequel that people will like? Uh, And then I watched uh, Ringu Zero, which was fine. That's all right. And then I watched uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is great, and Captain America Civil War, which is great. Currently in the middle of Infinity War, which is great. And then I started watching What If on Disney+, Plus, which is really good. Um, The first episode's kind of whatever, because I don't care about uh, Captain... It's like if, if Peggy Carter became Captain America instead. But it's like, right. it's it's good, but it's basically just Captain America First Avenger, but if Peggy Carter was in it instead. Um, but there's an episode where it's, what if the if Doctor Strange, like, has the car accident, but instead of his hands getting fucked up, um, Christine, the like, his love interest in it, dies instead. And, like, it's... it's the car? Yeah, the, he's in love with the car from the John Carpenter <laughs> movie. Um... And so it's like, it's basically just like, basically that happens and he just becomes obsessed with the idea of like, changing this fixed point in the timeline and becomes like, like evil Doctor Strange, basically. Evil. It's That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's really good. And I guess the one they're dropping this Wednesday is Marvel Zombies. So I'm very excited for that. Ooh. Yeah, I've been uh, interested in that. I was kind of going to kind of wait till like they were all out though. Yeah, like I, I signed up for like the year subscription, and because Caitlin wants to start like watching all the Marvel movies, so I was like, yeah, I'll just sign up for this. And I didn't want to like, I think I'm going to wait to watch like Loki and WandaVision and all that stuff until like I hit it in like the the rewatch with her. The, the timeline. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, well, well, I'll check out the first couple episodes of What If. Like the the second episode is instead of um. Uh, fuck, I can't think of what his actual name is. The guy that... Whatever Star-Lord's real name is. Not the actor Chris Pratt, but like whatever. Peter Quill. Peter Quill. Instead of Peter getting picked up uh, by the Ravagers, T'Challa gets picked up instead. Oh. And so he becomes Star-Lord, and it's like, it's really interesting. Like, the team that the Guardians end up being because of that, like, is really kind of a fascinating choice. And then you get, like, I don't know, there's a bunch of, like, cool cameos in it, so that one's pretty fun, too, and I don't remember what the third, ep- oh, the third episode's whatever, it's like, what if, the third episode is what if, um, instead of the Avengers forming, someone starts killing off everybody based on, like, the, f- you know, who, 
uh, Nick Fury was planning on building as the Avengers, so, like, somebody is killing off everybody in the Avengers initiative. And it's fine. So, like, Mortal Kombat? Well, no, it's, like, it's it's very much, like, a, a, like, mystery thriller kind of aspect to it. But it's basically, it's, um, uh... Black Widow's trying to figure out who's killing off, like, Iron Man and Captain America and Hulk and all this shit. So, so far, it's like, I mean, they're all good, and they all look great. It's just, you know, some of the plots, I'm just kind of like, yeah, this isn't, like, something I was, like, super wanting to see, but, like, also not mad I watched it, you know? But, like, the Doctor Strange one and the Guardians of the Galaxy one are very good. Uh, that's pretty much it. I've, my work schedule's been extremely stupid this week, so I get to watch a whole lot. Um, all right. Shout outs. Katie. Mm. Um, well, Harrison Ford as Clint Eastwood. It, I am not even kidding you. I called him Harrison Ford <laughs> like six times. I can't stop. I don't know. Harrison and Eastwood, for some reason, to me in my mind, are like similar names. Well, I hate to say this, but I have started playing Pokemon Go again. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You don't hate to say that at all. So I was playing it like when it very, very first came out and it was so hard because it was so buggy and like pretty much all you could do was catch Pokemon. And then when we went, so we kind of stopped playing, right? Then when we went to Japan, um, Chris and everybody was playing because, you know, there's, like, regional stuff you can only get in certain places. So they started to play again to catch that stuff, and I couldn't recover my account. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, start a new one because I really slugged through my first, like, 20 levels or whatever. And so then uh, once we moved here, we have, like, stopped in a gym that are literally like around the corner from us. So Chris was like trying to get, Chris basically got us all to like re-download it. Right. And I was like, fine, I'll just start a new account. There's so much more to do now. It'll be fine. So then I put like log in as a new guest. And then it just like logged into my account again that I had, you know, five years ago. And I was like, what? That's so weird. So I've been playing that again. And that's basically just like, all we've been doing um but it's been nice because we've been like it's like a reason for us to like walk out to places that we normally wouldn't so if anyone's playing pokemon go we can be friends (laughs) uh all right what about you kit uh all elite wrestling's all out from i guess it'll be a week and a night ago (laughs) whenever this comes out but uh, Seek it out. Shit fucking ripped. Yeah, it looks uh, insane. <laughs> it was maybe the best wrestling pay-per-view I've ever seen. I'm just wow. stacked. The crowd the crowd was so exhausted by the end because it was just non-stop. Yeah. There's just not a moment to breathe. Hits kept coming. Literally. Like, 2 a.m. and I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> and <laughs> Now I'm very tired. <laughs> um, Worth it. I don't know. Other than watching shit, I've done nothing this week. So, um, I don't know. Just donate to abortion funds in Texas, I guess. Oh, um, yeah. Also, throw bricks at Greg Abbott. Yeah. Definitely do that. That's my shout out. A brick if you, to if the you head. can't, If you can't afford to donate to a Texas fund, just throw anything at Greg Abbott <laughs> if you see him. Buy a copy of Grime Wave and have it mailed to the uh, governor's office. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Tiny, tiny flex the poop inside. Yes. Just, just make him eat some mud pie. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to grab, just grab too small a slice. Yeah. Um, all right. I had such a sloppy mud pie. I don't know what we're doing next week. I think man thing. That's right, yeah, man thing. We'll see. <laughs> um, everyone, everyone choose a movie and we'll meet up and we'll see. See where we're at. 
I'm just gonna put like fucking something on ra- like Netflix on random and see what pops up. <laughs> I watched uh, White Men Can't Jump. <laughs> I've watched like ticks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, thing will be next week. Um, if you want to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast. Merch. It's in normal places. Leave us a rating and review. Tell us... Tell us your favorite Amityville movie. I hope it's... If it's we'll block if it's you not, if you comment. <laughs> if it's not It's About Time, you're wrong. It's um, it's got to be Amityville Vampire. I'm assuming. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm gonna be so disappointed. I can already tell, but I'm excited. Amityville butt plug. I mean, that's what I'm assuming Amityville <laughs> Vibrator is about. So, uh, yikes! Follow us on Instagram at I Hope You Suffer Podcast. Follow Kate at Hidden Kidstory. Follow Katie at Werewolf Face. Go listen to my other podcast, Eight K Movie Club. Um, I can't believe it's been three years of this bullshit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have. I was. I. I have a. I made like a a list on Letterbox. That's every movie that we've covered as like a you know like a, a basically the main movie of like an episode and bonus episodes and stuff. And it's been uh two hundred and nine movies. Oh my gosh. That's a uh, a lot of shit. That's I would say cute. at least 200 of I, those are I was, bad. <laughs> I was literally going to say it's a lot of shit. Yeah, I would I would wager that only 9 of them have been <laughs> actually good. <laughs> Last vampire on earth. Yep. Freezer bird. Oh, oh god, god, I forgot <laughs> we did that. And and how high? <laughs> and that's it. How high? MVP2 wow. and twins. Uh, how no mercy. Yes. Oh my god, I forgot about MVP. Perfect movie. Did you... <laughs> we gotta do the other three. Uh... Oh man. <laughs> MXP or whatever. Yeah, most extreme primates. Snowboarded it up. <laughs> uh, all right. I am hungry. I've not eaten today, so I'm gonna go do that. I hope. You slime ball your sorority, but babes. <laughs> that one fell apart. <laughs> I hope you babe ball, but sorority slime. Yes. Arama. Babe ball. <laughs> <laughs>